Hi, everyone. How do you like this darkness? I hope you're doing well. I love when technology just decides to change things last minute, though you didn't touch anything, didn't warrant a change. Hi. <laughs> let's start off. So let's start off this talk with a bang. Hi to everybody who's new, who's joined. My name is Jamie Butler. I am a medium. I've been doing this work for over 30 years. I've authored books, I do trans channeling, but my really big passion is just to normalize this. It's not woo woo anymore. It's true, true. Let's talk about it. This intuitive ability, your psychic abilities, so real. You can rely on this stuff and it works great. And some of the things that I do on, okay, good. Some of the things that I do with my abilities, my woo-woo-ness is read people's energies and not just people, like animals, plants, rooms, books, people from afar. I, when I say it that way, I swear it sounds so invasive and I don't mean it that way at all. Super respectful. What I glean from the information of energy around us, I keep to myself unless that person, the source of it, asks me, what do you see? What do you see about my energy field? I'm like, oh, do you wanna know? <laughs> well, I was watching this happen. Yes, I am up and about. You can hear I'm still a little nasally. And for those of you who didn't know, I've been uh, enjoying a staycation with COVID and my family. So this is day 12 for me now. This is insane. I'm still testing positive. I just took a test before <laughs> this live stream. So I'm hoping Friday I'll be free and clear. So I'm I'm separated from Colleen, which means we can't do our trans channeling work. So I really appreciate your patience with all of it. Um, I was going to share a few stories about seeing and perceiving energy, but thank you for all of your healing thoughts. They were days that I could so feel your love and your presence like in my field. And it was like, I feel great, you know? And I would burn that energy in two hours and then my body was like, okay, you have to replenish that, Jamie, or you gotta go to sleep. So I slept quite a bit. So some fun stories. And I'd like for you to chime in at any time you have insights or questions if it's uh, about yourself and perceiving energy or what something is like or how it could be different or better, I would love to help answer that. So bring your questions, put your fingers to the keyboard. Can you read energy through chat? Oh my God, I love your <laughs> icon. I didn't see that it was a cat. Uh, yes, I can. My main thing, how I have linked my abilities to read people's energies is through names. So for a long time, if you gave me a nickname, it was kind of like, uh, that's nice and everything, but I would have to have the person's name. Just like how some people are like, well, what's your birthday? What, what time of day were you born? And they can tap in through that. Mine was name identity. So I've gotten much better with looking at people like, Meotrix reloafed. <laughs> Meotrix reloafed. <clears throat> to me, sorry, my throat is going to be tickly quite a bit. Uh, to me, that's not a proper name, but it took me a while to learn how to tap into nicknames to get to the source of what's connected to the nickname, and then I could read it. So, yeah, you can read energy remotely. You don't need to be in the same place. That's just like um, energy healing, Reiki, remote healing, pranic healing. All of this can be done remotely. It's just like prayer work. If you are um, in a religious structure and you pray for somebody, those intense thoughts and that love that you're giving arrive to that person. So just as much as you can give, you can also receive or perceive. And so that's what we'll be going over in the 16 weeks. So awesome. I'm really pumped about this series because I've wanted to get really nitty gritty because there is 
so many variations of energy patterns and they all mean something. And I think it's great when you can start to perceive the color off of somebody because color has a lot of information, but the location of the color and the hue of the color, like the difference between a bright polished yellow aura versus a mustard yellow aura. Like some of you would immediately go, oh, mustard yellow, that's kind of muddy. That's probably not really good. Not true. Mustard yellow is like a Peter Pan person. They're a little bit more playful. They're not going to adhere to rules, but their personality is more based in humor and a little bit of tease. And then you know how to approach that person. But if they're really polished yellow, <clears throat> that means that they have really done their homework. They are maybe going through uh, a therapy, a talk therapy, where they are checking in with themselves. And so a lot of internal reflection or intelligence, accurate facts, information would be more useful for this polished yellow energy that you're seeing. But just that slight difference in hue can mean something totally else. Yay. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate you. Listening from Massachusetts today. Yay. Kurt, I hear your home is also healed from COVID. Kurt says, wishing each and every one blessed and enriched day. Yay. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking for questions. Oh, you made it to your first live. Amy, Wallace, let's celebrate this. We're here. You made it. I'm so happy you're here. Oh, good morning from Luis from Buenos Aires. Steel energy read pop up. Sue Stack Steel energy read pop up. What do you mean pop up energy read? Sue, tell me more. What do you mean? Hi, Luis. Oh, Lumen Bennett, first live too. Oh, let's celebrate. You made it. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> Celebrating in Paris, France. You guys are showing up all over the world today. It's so nice to have the luminaires gathering. Luminaires are simply people who shine light. You're just conscious of your awareness of who you are and how you present yourself, and therefore you shine light, and that's a luminaire. Oh, good morning. <clears throat> Thank you for the good wishes. I think I just get a few more days with this. Oh good, 16 week series. I don't know why your connection to the video is stopping all the time. We have a really good connection here. Lynn from Idaho. Dave K, do closet doors bring in energy? Okay, I can take that two different ways. A closet door, like the closet door on a closet, it brings energy. Or do you mean a closed door? Can a closed door bring energy? That's the two ways. So a where your door was made, manufactured, um, who took care of it, who installed it, who painted it. If you are way big into antiques, where that door was, Previously, that owner and that owner's story is embedded into the wood grain, embedded into the fabric or the quality of the door as well. And that can influence what's happening in your space as well. So inanimate objects, though they are not animate, which we consider live, meaning sustaining life, um, it does have energy fields and it does carry frequencies that can influence your environment and influence you. Absolutely. Pure love ascension, you're all in. I can't wait to see you. Sabrina, how do we not absorb negative energy when around a negative person? Oh, I'm going to put that up, Sabrina. That's really good. So, <clears throat> excuse me again for doing that. Two approaches. First of all, what's negative energy? I want you to define it a little bit better than saying negative energy. I, we get caught up so much, and I'll talk heavily in the series about it, is negative energy. If we look at the word negative, it is a quality of energy. 
it rests on the left side of our body majorly majorly we're going to make up words <laughs> and it represents kind of the moon energy the feminine energy the energy that can change the healer the giver you know the fluid and um it doesn't necessarily mean bad Bad is the judgment quality of a particular frequency. So your bad is going to be different than my bad. Uh, my bad. <laughs> it's going to be different from each person. So there's not something that I can blanket cover and say, this is negative energy and you don't want it. I, I can't speak that way for you. So in class, when we talk about unwanted energies, I'm going to avoid calling them negative. And I'm going to say they're unwanted or unfavorable energies to you. So how do you not absorb unfavorable energy when you're around somebody who is behaving in a way that you don't align with? I mean, that's really what's down with it. Well, first of all, <clears throat> when you're around something you don't naturally like, you shut off a little bit. There are natural mechanisms mechanisms. I don't want to call it a technique. Technique kind of suggests you got to be conscious of it to do it. Think of like um, defense mechanisms energetically. And when you're not attracted to something and you want to bring it closer, your energy almost dulls down. It doesn't get spongy. It doesn't want to absorb that. So it won't. It's really intriguing. Now, what if you don't like that other person and you're not aligning with them but you're just so freaking intrigued about it so uh we can get dark real fast i'm trying to find a topic that's not so dark but if you're around somebody who is doing self-harm and you're like i would never self-harm i don't believe in that that's very um, painful or scary to me then your energy is not going to absorb the patterning or frequency of self-harm. You're not gonna just take it on or carry it. It's just not the way that we're made. We're, we're mirrored, a like attracts like. But if you have intrigue and like, God, I wonder what that feels like to cut yourself. I mean, I don't think I would do it, but I'm so into it. Like I wanna research it, I wanna study it, I find it so fascinating. Then your energy is more sponge-like, is a great way to describe it and it will absorb that frequency and carry that frequency. So that's when you need to be very clear on the differences. I'm intrigued, but I don't want to follow through. I'm interested and I want to learn, but I don't want to carry. And so that tweak needs to be made consciously so that you can turn off your energy field and absorbing those frequencies that you don't want to act on, just that you're curious on. Okay, so there really is no close energy or open energy. Those are terms used in energy healing, especially around chakras, but it's just not really true. Just know that you, Sabrina, have a natural, and this goes for everybody listening, you have a natural mechanism that will not carry somebody else's energy. Now there's another special kind of occasion that I guess we should talk about, and those are those empathic people who reside a bulk amount of their existence in their heart chakra. And the way that they show their compassion, this doesn't blanket everybody, this, this is not for every empathic person, but most empathic people, because they're not in control over their abilities to a clairsentient way, they're just kind of out there going, oh my God, I feel everything and I love everything and I'm overwhelmed. That's an empathic person. Clairsensitive person is like, oh, I can do this, but I also know how to not do it. So. Some empathic people will just be like, the way I show my love is to take your pain. Give it to me. You know, and they're like, oh, my God, tell me more. I feel so bad for you. And now I'm crying because you're crying. And you're, you're mimicking that other person's or animal's or plant's energetic pattern. And you're wearing it like a suit. And then when you wear it for a long time, see somebody and they are reacting to their favorite song being played by the band on stage. Like when their favorite song comes on, they just go, oh my God, it's my favorite song. Watch their aura. It'll change. <laughs> Most likely, it'll go to these funky, like water mixed colors of blue, because it's all about expression, voice, 
singing. There's a lot of honesty and history mixed in with the song and why they, why it is their favorite song, you know, their memory uploads. That's a lot of fun too. I do quite a bit of that when I'm with Colleen and we <laughs> go and watch these. Colleen, what are they called? Um, tribute bands. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's my favorite song. <laughs> Can you, when you see it, is this what you're asking, MV? Um, see, turn it off sometimes if you can for health and safety. Yeah, you can turn this stuff off. It's not an off, really. It's a dull it down, dial it down, dial it down. It's more of like a practice of ignoring it. And um, for seeing, like um, maybe how you perceive as well, for me, it took several years to learn to ignore what I saw because it's really in your face. And I just had to look past it and look around it, kind of like always looking through fog or mist. And then finally I could get to a place where my mindfulness and my focus was not on the energy itself, but it was on the human experience that I was in. So that helped me dull it down, turn it off. For empathic people, that's gonna be a different kind of switch. You know, to dull down your emotions, that impacts your day-to-day -day life. Dull down what you see, Yes, it's going to impact, but it's not going to change how I feel and how I'm showing up to things. So a different approach for those who are more empathic and clairsentient is going to be identifying what is mine, what is yours. Is this mine? Is this mine? Is it yours? <laughs> I like to do these hand gestures. If you ever watch Saturday Night Live, this is acting. This is not acting, not acting. <laughs> so this is me being an empathic, not an empathic. 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 So it's going to be as simple as turning your energy out and turning your energy in. And we'll practice some of that in the class so that you can dull it down and be you wherever you are, whether it's at a concert or having a conversation, you know. <laughs> so these are more reading questions. So um, Bethany, I just glanced through your question about you being on a train. Uh, pulling a truck which crashed into the train. There was a fire and I was watching my right hand and arm starting to burn. Was this another life or just my mind? I see that this was another lifetime blending in. It's not uncommon these days to have our other memories blend in with ours. And it's a little bit different. Like the dream is a little more technicolor. It's a little more real than our other dreams. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sue, you're so welcome. Ah, Christine Holiday says, I observe, I don't absorb. I love it. Observe, absorb. Oh, Zimbazu, thank you for the beginning of my awakening six years ago. You changed my awareness of those who passed. The curiosity snowballed into hunger for more and loves meaning bless you oh my god thank you so much for sharing that and saying that thank you okay funny. funny question good mood what makes you laugh and where are you ticklish what oh funny question to a good mood that you could ask people to make them shift their energy that's very true. Where are you ticklish? They'll immediately shift colors. I hear that YouTube is glitching a little bit, but you can jump over Jamie Butler Medium Facebook, and we are there as well, and it is not glitching as much. Okay. I need to catch up with your questions. Does each clair resonate to a specific chakra? So clairsentient would be more of a heart chakra base and clairvoyant would be more of a third eye chakra. Always wondered about this. It does. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it does, and that claircognizant, that knowing bit is more aligned with the crown chakra, with the pineal gland. 
just kind of information just arrives and you just know it. Um, Clara audience I think also resonates with throat chakra, the hearing and the ears, sentient, and then sentient, the feeling, also resonates really well with sacral chakra, the gut instinct, because that's another secondary brain tissue energy and so much there. Is your spirit team always visible to you? No. No, they're not. Sometimes I look around and I look at walls <laughs> or sky and there's nothing. It's okay. Sometimes I feel them. Um, but traditionally, when I ask for them to show up, because of the way that I've trained myself, I will go back to seeing them. Are they always around you? No. But are they always accessible? Yes, big time. All right, Mag Marie, is there any way to develop talent skill to see your guides, whether they're in spirit or different dimensions, and work with them day to day, but in a more physical form versus thought form? Oh, you got to tell me more, Mag, on what you mean by physical form. I know you got some quotes around it. But like, what do you mean? So you mean less of a... I'm in my internal psychic universe and more into the here's my day to day with spirit, humanizing them. Is that what you mean? And I know it takes a moment for the response from you to come back, but I'll wait to hear that before I continue with the answer. So I think for me, I've humanized spirits because when I first started doing this, I was a kid. And my comfort level was to see and hear like a person. And so when I developed my relationship with spirit, they presented in a way that was comfortable to me, which was to see and hear. And that's why I think as an adult, I'm still developing my clairsentient ability and my claircognizance ability. But my seeing and my hearing is like you'd use it every day, like a stranger on the street. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. You know, I see a spirit. In the room, I'm like, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Who are you? Why are you here? It's nice to see you. You know, and I talk to them just like that, which is a little bizarre, but you know, we're all different in our approaches. And I hope if you end up studying with me, I can help you find the approach that you really enjoy and that what you want to do. Scrolling down. Okay. <laughs> I love it. We've got some wonderful spamming happening here. And we also have another um, fake Instagram account. Just know that I won't private message you or direct message you through any of my social media accounts and ask for you to come work with me. I will hold talks like this because I am more interested in empowering you rather than coming to you going, I have information I think you need. I don't feel like that's a responsible way of using this kind of craft. And um, it's uncomfortable to me to approach somebody that way because I want people to feel they are always in control and they have what they need. So I'm not going to be reaching out to you like that. If you get somebody who reaches out to you, do what you wish. Have fun. <laughs> um, if you'd like, let us know. We've already reported the one on Instagram. Do you ever just feel them, says Bethany. Yes, sometimes. I get more confused when I just feel spirit. Um, and in the perceiving and reading energy, I'm going to focus heavily on just the energy aspect. All of what I'm going to teach in the 16 weeks can be translated into seeing spirits because spirit is made of energy. You already knew that, but I just thought I'd go, wow, listen to that. Um, but I'm going to start off really, really basic and talk to you about the energy. And of course, we're gonna get into what are your belief systems, because um, your mindfulness and your belief systems are going to affect the way that you engage with energy. And then we're gonna take tons of notes on color and layers and all of this, is that when you start to engage with energy and you're reading it and getting the information from it, and you start to see spirit, which or see, sense, perceive, know, there's different ways of engaging with energy and they're all accurate. I kind of want you guys to learn how to do all of them at once rather than just the one thing. I think the one approach is very passe. <laughs> like 
in the 90s, it was more like, I'm a clairvoyant. Oh, wow, you're a clairvoyant? Yes. Like we had to have our titles to show you how we worked or we weren't valid. Um, whereas today it's like, you're an intuitive being. And my God, you like mix food together and make, you know, these recipes and it's delicious. Our spiritual work is the same way. You mix together all of your clairs and you call from which one is going to be the easiest. Like, I don't want this to be a hard journey. Yeah. Is it, Jack Mack, just love saying that. Is it true earth angels have the most struggles? If so, why? I don't know. I mean, why do we say that, right? Um, in my opinion, those earth angels, those entities that have come to a human existence, I believe they struggle more because there's so much misalignment. When you're coming from a higher dimensional or even, uh, we're going off topic, and I didn't mean to go off topic today, but when you are incarnated from a different dimensional plane, higher frequency or lower frequency, uh, when you consider yourself a star being, when you are more in alignment to a multidimensional uh, life frame rather than this human multidimensional life frame, it could be um, angelic, it could be um, Octarian, which I was just trying to learn about the other day. And you come to a human existence and you maintain memory of where you were. I call it spiritual depression. And I think we're going to have a trans channeling about this coming up with Grace. Um, this is a misalignment of how you know you can spiritually express yourself and engage with energy, but in a human existence, it's not happening. You feel trapped, dense, lower. I mean, this luggage you're carrying and the agreement of coming to earth, it just vibrates at a whole different, you know, level <laughs> container over here. And you are connecting and having memory of this frequency bandwidth over here and they just they don't overlap so you can see how that would be disappointing and I think that's where we get the concept of having more struggle I find that when people are incarnating as humans from other dimensional planes a big part of their presence is to practice acceptance you know accepting where they are and what that limitation is offering them and then through that acceptance they find all these workarounds. And this is where fabulous miracles, what we call miracles, things that exist beyond what we believe is possible, the possible begins to happen. So if you find yourself in that boat, Jack Mack, I hope you're practicing the acceptance part. Angela. <clears throat> Angela says, hello. I believe my strongest ability is claircognizant. She knows things, but how do I discern if what I'm getting is spirit and not my own thoughts or my ego? Right? It's such a fine line. Oh, Angela, I wish it was easy as saying, we're just going to cut the slice of cake and remove the slice from the whole cake. And here you go. But um, it's all going to mix together because your ego, <clears throat> your identity and your character all feed how you use your clairs. Here's Big Red. If you're playing the game, take a drink. <laughs> I don't think anybody plays the game, but this is what I say. <laughs> um, so we need those pieces in place. And those internal thoughts of what is happening or how you perceive, those thoughts are generated in the same place where our intuition generates as well. So I tend to say this. If you're having thoughts that just come in, boom. They're not triggered by something. You weren't previously thinking about it. You didn't have a buildup. They just came and they came and you were managing them. You're like, oh, why am I thinking that? What is that about? What, where did that even come from? You know, and you're having those reactions to it. That is claircognizant. Because if it's your thoughts and you're thinking it, you're not going to be so wowed by it because you created it. Sorry, <laughs> but you're not going to go, oh, oh, my God. That's why these aha moments and these bright ideas, 
these bright ideas don't belong to you. Those are clear, lightning crisp moments of you downloading information from this greater, you know, existence beyond you. Boom, you get it and you go, oh, I got an idea. Do you? That just means your, your brain antenna just caught something from the ethers, like a radio station picked up a radio frequency and boom, you're playing the song. You're just like channeling it in really fast. So if you're reacting to it, like, an amazement or curiosity and wonderment, I would say baseline as a beginner, that is my clear cognizant ability. So let me look at it that way. And then when you start to look at it that way, then you could start to build a trust with it and start to tell a difference. And then you'll come up with your own ways of deciphering between the two. That's a great question. Vanessa. Hi, how are you? Hi, Jamie. What's a practice to better hone our ability to perceive, especially if it's been dormant? You know, the most exciting thing about your question, Vanessa, is that you said it was dormant. That means you had it before and it went to sleep somehow, or it's not as easily accept ex acceptable, not acceptable, ac accessible. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> this might be the most I've talked in a while. <laughs> Accessible. So whatever you've had before, you can have again. Now, the big thing, Vanessa, I want you to look at what your belief systems are about getting back that which you had. Some people take the like Rocky Balboa approach. You have to work harder, <laughs> be bigger, be stronger, be better. Push until you get it. And if that's what you believe in, then that's what you're going to need to do. But in the reality of things, <clears throat> if you've already had it once, you could relax back into it. So first start with your belief system. At, at any turn for anybody, guys, if you have a question, you got to look at what you're believing in first so that you can unravel that to get to your goal. Your goal is to go back and to hone back into them. So as an adult, if you've had it as a kid and you want to get it back, what were some things you used to do as a kid? Being playful, being creative. I would say, number one, invite your imagination back. You probably put it on hiatus to be an adult. Get your imagination back. Doodle, play games. I know it sounds so silly, but practice getting your imagination back. Your imagination and your intuition both reside in the same spot in your head. They're bunk mates. I always say you get to choose who sleeps on top, but they are bunk mates and they're one needs the other to exist. So get your imagination, your play and your creativity back. Once that's there, then I would start getting into meditation, diving into the internal world inside of you, but in a playful way. I would not approach this as a discipline. That's probably what got you into this place to begin with. You disciplined yourself out of it, so don't do it. <clears throat> it's like, I don't know what's happening in there. This is intense. So I hope that helps. Creativity first. Sunflower still asked, or not still, but it is a question based on another one earlier. How to protect your energy as a highly sensitive person that feels a lot. I think protection on certain levels, sunflower can get you in trouble. Um, I've watched some people who are really, really sensitive and they use so much protection that they cut themselves out of their own experience. Or they continually walk around with this, I'm really sensitive and I can't be around this. And I can't be around that and I can't. And they're constantly throwing their energy out to elbow the experience of life away from them. It can be exhausting. And it can also remove you from your life a little bit. So you have to decide <clears throat> how much protection do you really need? So when I teach protection, I, I try to teach it like um, instead of a brick wall, um, more like a, a screened-in porch. 
where it can let in that which you want, but keep at bay that which you're not attracted to. And sometimes really highly sensitive people just want to shut everything out because it's just too much. And um, I'm going to beg a little bit that you don't take that approach because there's so much out there that's in alignment with you and good for you at certain levels and doses. Um, so I would use a filtering technique to surround myself in filters to let that which serves me in and that which does not serve me stay at bay. And I would word it just like that. Because your energy is intelligent. Your higher self is intelligent. It will know what is needed and what's not. And that way you won't have to take on that protection. And then start moving through life. And what you'll watch is you still stay highly sensitive. But your triggers cease to occur. You don't get overloaded and overwhelmed. It, you're still able to show up. And you're still picking up on everything. It's just not consuming you anymore. So it's a practice of that nature as well. <clears throat> I'm laughing at some of these spammers. Okay. Ah. Yeah. That was a cool question. If Bethany says, if someone like me has a cyst on their pituitary gland, not pineal, do you think it affects intuition? Yeah. I think everything inside of you affects your intuition. Drastically? I don't know. But it's definitely part of your equation. Every cyst, everything that you create, your character, personality, your identity, uh, everything that you're working with, headaches, disease, illness, pain, suffering, grief, um, all of your emotions, joy, happiness, laughter, expression, all of that is blending in to make you. Um, so I would sit down and start looking at it from internal standpoint with whatever you're working with and asking, how is it helping? How is it mixing to my outcome? I've been told channeling by Chantal. What? <laughs> Let me just say that first. I've been told my main guide is mad at me and I'm feeling blocked because I'm afraid of making him mad and I'm feeling I'm messing up. Faking readings, I'll bet proof coming through. Advice, please. I really admire you. Well, thank you. Um, mad at you? So that raises alarms for me big time. I have found that as people, we can get mad with each other, upset, disappointed, um, because we have expectations, you know, and sometimes we place those expectations so heavily on the other person, and when they don't perform to them, we think they're just wah, off the charts, and we get upset, disappointed. I have yet been able to replicate those kinds of interactions to spirit. To spirit in the realms where we're working, to our loved ones, beyond, angels, guides, relatives, especially, um, I have not seen that. So if you are hearing or feeling that they are mad with you, of course, there's always two ways to approach, okay? The first way is I would look at self first. Go internally, because that, that's you. You have access to all that information. And if you feel your guide is upset with you or not showing up the way that you wanted or needed, I would look at self and go, what was my expectation? What was I doing on that relationship that could create disappointment within me? And then I would analyze that. And if you can't do that on your own, definitely find somebody like a talk therapist or a psychiatrist who can help you look at that because it's important. Then... If you're like, I've done that. That's not me. I'm just getting this vibe. I'm getting this thing. So there's a second way to approach it. If you're getting that energy or you're working through somebody else, another human that goes, your guides don't like you because you're not doing what they ask. So they're not going to give you what you're looking for. That elementary, like backstabbing, tit for tat kind of a, relationship is not true 
Um, so I would either separate or remove myself from the reader who is telling me these things. Or if it's coming straight from energy source, I would separate myself from energy source because that could possibly be an energy entity that is um, presenting themselves to be someone that they are not. I have worked with a few entities through the Ouija board long time ago, guys, college days. This was like 20 plus years and um, it was awful. They said they were somebody I knew and they said the nastiest stuff to me. And I was like, my friend would never say that. Like this doesn't feel right. And as soon as I cut that off, walked away from it, I didn't use the Ouija board for a while, relied on my other abilities. I connected to my friend and my friend was like, that wasn't me. Mm, I don't know what happened, sorry. So there are energies out there who are lower frequency than us because it's only the lower frequency than us that can present those kinds of tit for tat, I'm mad, I'm this. Um, I would then separate, cancel your connection with them. And we could talk about that in the, the series. Um, but that kind of energy is definitely not gonna come from entities that are guiding us who have higher or different frequencies above us. I just wanna say this, higher doesn't necessarily mean better. The judgment of better and bad, that's gonna be based on you. Higher frequency is just naming the quality of frequencies. And in certain frequencies, there are emotional you know, reactions or qualities that don't exist within those frequencies. They can't vibrate and thrive there. And that I'm mad at you and tit for tat doesn't thrive there. Right, I agree. Meowtrix is saying, I don't believe guides will ever be mad with you. Agreed. You've also been told that I'm mad at you? Yeah. No way. Class act, report these jerks, says Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. Missing you, loving you. Um, interesting. Nikki says, do you know, wait, do you know, do our non-physical friends who are still around us still want to be called by their earthly name as before they transitioned or died, or do they prefer another more positive name? It's a personal preference. I still have friends who are like, no, call me Donnie. My name is Don, call me Donnie. You know, and then I have others who are like, yes, I am her father. My name is this, but I prefer I go by this now. Or some just aren't even interested in the whole name game. For them, the name game is, it's unique. Like, grasp that. Here, when we talk about somebody because we feel we are separate from them, we say, yes, that is my father, Joel. Joel is over there. Joel is separate from me. And we're going to talk about Joel. Like, so we name. We name it because it's separate. But when we don't no longer have these bodies and we don't resonate on Earth, we don't speak in these terms. We feel and connect. We have a knowing. We don't need to name things. And there's very little miscommunication. I think that's one of the things I'm excited for, guys. Very little miscommunication. Mag is back. OK, I was waiting for you. OK, thanks, Jamie. If it's thought form, then how do we know it's not imagination, just me projecting in my mind versus who I actually am connecting with? Can your guides interact with you in the physical? Um, so there is a difference between imagination, thought, and intuition. And again, I'll go back to the intuition. When it comes to you, you'll actually react to it. You'll go, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's very neat. Why am I thinking that? Uh -huh. And you have more words to follow up. When you're creating it, you don't react to what you've created. You build on it. And so it has quite a different approach. So you just need to be consciously aware of what you're, you're sensing and feeling as you're having those thoughts. Uh, and then it'll be very clear that, yes, you're building it, or yes, you're receiving it. Receiving has reaction, and you're holding space for it. 
creation is you're generating the energy and you're putting it forth. So practice that slight change of how the energy moves and you'll be able to identify it from there on out. My guides, can they interact with you in the physical? They can create touch. I do hear sound outside of my ears and I do see outside of my eyeballs. Um, they're light. Um, I have seen them move books, paranormal activity of that way, um, turn on radios, move curtains and furnitures. I have seen them interact with another person and get a person to come talk to me, a stranger, and give me a message and walk away and you turn around and look and the stranger's not there anymore. Um, so yes, they can find ways to communicate to you in the physical. Um, I think that one is a little bit more unique but it is definitely possible. <laughs> Lumen, weird question. Can spirits make their presence known through a pet? For instance, making my cat meow when asked a question. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Birds are so good at this. Birds are wild and domesticated birds um, are fabulous. Dogs are really good at tracking. You know, they watch and they're so intrigued. They're like, what is that? So you can always get a glance in. Um, but yes, they can pet the dog, the cat. They can encourage the cat, the dog to speak up. Um, there are so many different ways that they can engage through pet. But also your pet can hear you internally Right? And so while you're thinking in your head and you have emotions tied behind that, they can feel your emotions behind it and project back to you. So though it's not a spoken English language exchange, it's more of a heart to heart communication absolutely can happen. Happen. You guys are hanging in there. OK, I'm scrolling down to some new ones. Um, can animals need help moving on once they've passed? Most likely, no. They're so smart. I mean, I group animals with children. They often do not need any, any, any help. They are already so connected. It is when we, as humans, grow older, we kind of get away from source where we need reminding how to come back. Um, but I feel like animals are so connected that they just don't need that kind of assistance. And that is from Destiny Freeman. Hi, Destiny. Oh, you guys, great questioning. Uh, and channeling by Chantel comes back and says, thank you guys. It was from the other humans telling me he's mad at me. I blocked them, needed your validation. Yay! Do spirits have disappointment? It's so bizarre. They just love you inside and out. They want the best for you. It's just a completely different kind of relationship. I'm really happy for you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. I cannot believe we've already like hung out for an hour. I was like, I'll just have on for 30 minutes and chat a little bit. I'm really excited about the series. If you're a YouTube member, $100 off. We also have a nice discount over on Learn It Live. If you are a Learn It Live member, which is not a member to my teaching channel on Learn It Live platform, Learn It Live platform has their own membership program. So if you're already a member over there, there's a discount there too. And of course, on YouTube membership. So I hope to see you there. Again, if you guys have any questions about what we'll be going over, what it will look like, how we'll be supporting you, ask. You know, you can ask here in the chat thread. You can ask over on info at jamiebutlermedium.com. I would love to help you feel safe and knowing that the classes are going to empower you and help you navigate your ability and your skills so that you can leave with this. Hopefully, if you want, you know, offer readings to others. That would be kind of cool. Um, but at least 
Use it for yourself. That is my main goal. Let's normalize this ability. We all have it. It's incredible. All right. If there's no last minute things about energy and what's going on and anything like that, I send you the best. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for the love during my family's COVID healing journey. <laughs> I think we will be in the clear come this Friday. Be well, everybody. Choose happiness, choose love. And remember, not choose love, but choose love. <laughs> and remember, it's not woo-woo. It's true-true. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh, thank you, Muddy Ash. That's so wonderful. Thanks, Amber. Bye, guys.